Hello Williams class. For your English lesson today, we are still looking at graphic novels and we will be understanding the features of a graphic novel. Get to know your graphic novel. So in graphic novels, there are many, many features that we can see, such as panels so panels are what the graphic novel is split into so you can see this is one panel um every square or rectangle or bit that's been cut out to make one um scene is called a panel you've got frames as well gutters speech and thought bubbles captions and onomatopoeia and you can see this uh, graphic novel is from um, one called A Wrinkle in Time, and it's by Madeline Lengel and Hope Larson. So here is a close up of the features of a graphic novel and where you can find them in a graphic novel. So you have the caption, panel, gutter, thought balloon, sound effect and dialogue balloon as well. Now we're going to go through what each of those features mean and why they are featured in a graphic novel to begin with. So the first one is panel. Now a panel um, refers to the boxes that contain the story and panels are arranged from left to right, top to bottom. So that is the way that you read them. You go from one side to the next and you read it from going up and then down. <clears throat> gutter. The gutter is the space between the panels. So if you look at this graphic novel here, you'll notice that each panel has a gap in between um, and that helps us to see that they are different scenes. Um, so the space between them is what we call the gutter. Next you have word balloons and thought bubbles. Now they contain dialogue or thoughts of the characters in the stories. So you have um, a scene from the River Nile in Egypt and here you have some ancient Egyptians talking and the speech bubbles are in white. The writing is in black so it really stands out and you can almost hear what they would have sounded like back then. Next, you have a caption box. A caption box is a rectangular box at the top or the bottom of the panel. Um, it is used as a narrative aid. So what that means is, um, if you have a look at this caption box here, for example, reading that out loud will then allow you, it will help you to understand what's happening in the picture. So when it says it's used as a narrative aid, narrative is when you're telling a story and aid is when you are helping. So a narrative aid, the caption box, uh, is helping us to tell the story in greater detail and just a lot better and a lot clearer as well. Um, caption boxes help the reader to understand the setting and the story better as well. So they help us to understand where the story is taking place and what's actually happening in the story as well. Then you have onomatopoeia. So onomatopoeia are sound words and they are words that imitate a sound. Imitate means to copy. So for example, when there's an explosion, you might hear a boom sound. So boom is an example of onomatopoeia. You have zonk, you have pow, you have crash, you have someone laughing at the bottom. So those are all examples of onomatopoeia. They, they make you hear that sound. Now, how do you read graphic novels? So you read graphic novels, you read the panels from left to right. So as you would read a normal book, um, you read from top to bottom and left to right. You read items inside each panel the same way from left to right. And again, just to emphasize, it's from top to bottom. It's not the other way around and it's not, um, it's basically, it is, the more I think about it, it is like reading a normal book. It just looks a little different because of the panels, because of the pictures, because of the speech bubbles, the onomatopoeia, but it is basically read like a normal um, novel. The only, or the big reason why it's important to understand how to read it though, is because it looks different to a normal novel. So when you look at a page in a graphic novel, it can look quite confusing. You might be thinking, how do I read this? So these are just a few reminders on how to do so. 
can see that. Now, how to read a graphic novel page. Graphic novels are read left to right, just like traditional texts. Action to action transition. We have the actions of a character change from frame to frame. So what this means is, is that each panel in a graphic novel will show you something different. The character should be doing something different in each one. Um, this usually takes place over a short period of time. So one page of a graphic novel could um, tell you the story that would normally last about 30 seconds, but they show you with different pictures. Um, it takes up a bit more space, which is why um, there's a lot more detail and which is why it can be a little bit trickier to read. Um, and action to action transition is often used in fight or chase scenes. So where something dramatic is happening, that's where you might see action to action transition. So an example of that is with this graphic novel here with two people fighting. So each panel, each part of the story, each picture is telling you something different. However, um, it's about the same thing. It's about the same fight. So it's um it's an example of action to action transition and it's really really fun to read actually because it looks as though you're well not looks but it feels as though you're watching a movie because it's the pictures that you see and they're almost brought to life because of how detailed they can be now remember as you read that graphic novels show you the story rather than tell you. So take your time and study the illustrations carefully. Normally when you read a traditional book, um, when you, it, any book that's not a graphic novel, um, it normally tells you the story quite clearly. Whereas in a graphic novel, you have to understand it a little bit more independently. It doesn't give you too much detail about the actual storyline. So when you are reading a graphic novel, make sure to really look at the pictures that are included in the graphic novel um, because they will tell you the story more than, more than the words. So when looking at graphic novels at first glance, we see the following panel, gutter, speech bubbles and thought bubbles, onomatopoeia, and a caption box. When looking at graphic novels, we also look at sentence level features. So what that means is that we look at what's included in the sentences themselves. Now, specifically, we are going to look at what goes into adventure stories. Adventure stories are a type of narrative in which a protagonist embarks on some sort of journey or quest. So a narrative is a story in which the protagonist, protagonist is a, the main character, they go on some sort of journey or they have some sort of mission to complete. In adventure stories, the protagonist, main character, often has to overcome exciting or dangerous events. So in adventure stories, typically you have to, the main character has something exciting to do or something dangerous to then um, complete and, and be careful about as well. There is often some kind of villain or dark force that the protagonist must defeat. There's always a baddie in these adventure stories. Um, they often contain lots of action, some sections are fast paced, whilst some are slower and more descriptive. Most adventure stories are told in chronological order. So that means they happen, the, the stories are told in the order that it happens, beginning, middle and end. However, sometimes writers can use different effects. One effect that a writer might use is called a flashback. So that tells events in different orders. So even though traditionally adventure stories do have a beginning, a middle and an end, sometimes a writer will include a flashback to um, maybe a memory that the main character has, has from a couple of years ago, something like that. And that then makes the story sound a little bit more different and a little bit more new and unique as well. And adventure stories are often written in the past tense language. Now, what words and techniques should you use? You should use description to help the reader to imagine what you are writing about. Now, you can do this by carefully using nouns, um, adjectives, verbs, expanded noun phrases, similes, metaphors, and onomatopoeia, and long flowing sentences. Short, short and snappy sentences work very well as well, but it depends on what you are 
using those sentences to really say. Um, you should use punctuation for effect and to make things uh, clear as well. Use these punctuation marks accurately. So make sure when you're using a full stop, it is at the end of a sentence. Commas should be used to separate items when you're making a list. Um, a question mark should be used to show that you are asking a question. An exclamation mark should be used after an exclamation, after someone has shouted something. And an apostrophe should be used to show when a letter or a number has been left out. Make sure that you are using dialogue to help you move the action on. So it shows when a character is talking and you use the speech mark symbols to um, show that the character is talking. Make sure you use sentence openers, make sure you use conjunctions to link your sentences and ideas together, use subordinating conjunctions as well, fronted adverbials, so when um, the ad adverbial word or phrase is used and moved to the beginning of the sentence. Um, those devices we have had practice of using before, so I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to do that and include that in your own um, writing one day. Uh, and using words from the word mat, which I will go through now. So they are adventure, danger, awful, chilling, magical, weird, bellowed, boomed, muttered, staggered, shrieked, roared, angrily, furiously, hopelessly, carefully, lazily. So those are our adverbs. Beast, rainforest, shelter, victim, predator, confusion, excitement, glorious, majestic, while, which, and whose. In your writing, remember to also use the spelling grammar and handwriting rules that you have learned. Content, so what are you writing about? Make sure that you have included three key features in your content, the setting, the characters, and the quest. Now the setting is the place where the story takes place. Settings for adventure stories can be any place where there is a chance of danger. For example, the jungle, the ocean, the North, South Pole, forest or desert. Try to immerse your readers in your setting through using a range of descriptive techniques, see the top right, to appeal to the reader's five senses. Try to immerse your readers in your setting through using a range of descriptive techniques to appeal to the reader's five senses. Touch, taste, smell, sight, and feel. Hang on, which one, what are the, what are the five senses? Touch, taste, smell, sight and touch, taste, smell, characters. Adventure stories usually have the same character types. Protagonists are the main characters who the story is about. They are often the hero of the story. Heroes have lots of good qualities, for example, kindness, bravery, confidence, and villains have bad features, for example, sneakiness and meanness. Sidekicks help the hero through the adventure and are very loyal. Guides are characters who give the hero information to help them, and you should help your reader to learn about your characters through characterization. Now, the last feature in your content is the quest. There needs to be a reason for the adventure to take place. This is called the quest. At the beginning of the adventure story, there needs to be a build up as the quest becomes clear. The quest may be to save someone or perhaps to find a special object. The quest normally leads the hero on a journey away from home. On this journey, they face many different dangers before facing the villain or biggest danger. At the end of the quest, the characters often learn something about themselves, others, or the world. Structure. How do I set my writing out? Now, your story needs a title. Titles should have keywords that give the reader more information about the most important thing, character, or story in, or idea in the story. They should also attract your target reader. Top tip. 
spend more time climbing this mountain that we are about to see, which is a story mountain. For example, building up, than coming down. So your story mountain, it goes from left to right, and it looks like this. There's a beginning, so you're introducing your characters in the setting. You have the build up, hints and clues about what may happen. Dilemma, a problem that needs to be fixed. Climax, good battles against bad to fix the problem. Resolution, the problem is fixed. Falling action, what life is like after the event and an ending, the point at which the story finishes. Adventure stories often try to surprise the reader in the end with an unexpected twist. Task number one, you're going to label features of a graphic novel in the panels below. And over here is a bigger version of the graphic novel. So you can pause the video here and label, and you can take a screenshot, whatever you would like to do. Then, once you have done that, task number two is to create a toolkit for graphic novels. So we have discussed what we see in graphic novels. Now it's your turn to create a toolkit, talking all about it and telling me what features you think need to be in a graphic novel to make it a graphic novel. And task number three, explain what each of the features is used for. So why do we have what we have in a graphic novel? What is the point of having a thought bubble? What is the point of having onomatopoeia? Why do we have these in a graphic novel? That's what you have to explain. Enjoy boys and girls, and you'll see me very soon in the next video. Bye.